This presentation goes over the statement of work document and what sort of preparation is required to make a good statement of work. A statement of work is a document that is used throughout design projects to demonstrate what it is that you're going to deliver to a client. For senior project, your statement of work is something that clearly defines what the problem is that you're going to solve. It also goes through the process of, of identifying prior or partial solutions that have been attempted before for this problem. It then specifies what scope you will tackle for your project. What exactly are you going to deliver? How much flexibility does your final design have? It will also spell out exact performance criteria that your final design will be tested against to see if it meets the goals of the project. It also shows your sponsor that your team has a design process and has the resources required to solve this problem. Now each one of these topics relates to a specific item in the statement of work document. So the problem is related to the background and the customer need. In other words, when you define the customer and the need, you are defining the problem. The solutions are captured in the background section that is devoted to the technology, the technical problem you're dealing with, as well as existing products or similar products that might solve that technological problem. The scope shows up in the objectives section where you're defining the problem and the goals. And the performance is also the objective section, but here the specifications part of that document. Process shows up in your method of approach section and resources is in your management plan. So the things that the statement of work needs to do is what drives the contents of the statement of work document. So briefly, the statement of work contents are a background section that talks about the customers and their needs as well as the products and the technologies used to solve the need in the past and that you might use in the future. There's an objective section which defines the scope in terms of a problem statement and goals, but in addition has engineering specifications or a, a formal set of requirements that you will test your final design to, against. There's a method of approach section which describes the process, the design process you'll be using, and there's a management plan which defines the major responsibilities as, any, as well as any extra resources that you might be using for the project. And lastly, there are appendices, references for everything in your background section, a quality function, de quality function deployment, house of quality, we'll be talking about that a little bit later, and anything else that is an important appendix to add. Here's a quick cartoony example of why it's important to define your problem. Suppose that your sponsor came in with a particular description of a design that they wanted made. You interpreted that description a little bit different than they intended, and then during your design process you modify it still further. Um, when you go to build it, you're not going to be able to make it the same way you had intended. So you'll come up with a way to work around that. But at the end of the day, have you really captured what that end user really wanted? We want to make sure we get to the end user at the beginning of the project so you don't end up with a dissatisfied user at the end of the day. So that describes what is in the statement of work, but how do you get to that? What is the work that needs to be performed? Well, primarily it's design research. It's researching the problem. So you're going to start out by looking first at the customer and what their needs are. And you want to keep asking the question why. When a customer says or a customer shows that they do something, you want to ask the question, why do you do that? And you keep asking why because that helps you dive for what the real need is. What is the cause of this issue? Now you might not be able to address the cause. There might be other constraints on your design process. But if you need to know what it is, because that can drive different sorts of solutions. In addition, there's product research. There's always been something that's been tried before. Learn from that. Um, identify what it is that you're competing against, whether it's an actual product that's available or whether it's a process that they're using as a workaround right now. That's your competition. You want to make sure you're better than that. And then there's technical research. Any design is going to have some technical challenge. If it didn't, then a solution would probably already be out there. You want to figure out what that real, the meat of that problem is. What is the science behind it? I always think about the physics behind something. What's actually causing this problem physically? When you understand that, you can get more detailed information about good solutions. So defining the technical challenge is your third area of research. So before you can start your customer research, you need to ask your question, what, who are your customers? 
Well, obviously your sponsor is going to be one of your customers. You need to satisfy them. That's your main contact. But in addition, your sponsor might be working for someone else. There might be an end user of the product. So you need to consider them. You need to talk to them. You need to watch them, understand what's going on with them. There are the people who are actually going to buy the product. So this might be management at the company if it's an internal thing, or it might be um, end users. It might be parents, like in the case of the child here. It might be a parent who's buying this product. But then in addition, Everyone who's involved with making, delivering, repairing this part have some degree of interest in your design. So in a sense, they are customers. I usually think of primary customers being end users, secondary being the people maybe who are paying for it or influencing the decision, and then tertiary customers are the ones who are going to be influenced it, but buy it but don't often have a whole lot of say. If you can get their input now, you will get a better design. So how do you do customer and need research? Well, first of all, think about what your goal is. You want to understand your customer. You want to look at things from your customer's perspective. There's a word for that. You want to gain empathy with your customers. How do you do that? Well, start out by talking to your sponsor. That, number one, they're one of your customers. Have that first conversation with them, but certainly don't stop there. Keep asking why until you figure out the real root cause. Again, you might not be able to address that root cause, but you should understand what it is. And then go out and talk to the users. But don't just talk to them, watch them. See what they do, ask them why they do it. So document that process as well. How does it seem to you? How does it feel to them? Talk with them. Um, ask them what they've done in the past and what went wrong with those solutions. Ask them what they think needs to happen. Try to get down to the basic functions rather than solution types. Um, but also ask them for the, what they think the best solution is. That won't necessarily be the best solution, but it will give you insight as to what they're looking for. You can also collect some data. The, um, for certain types of products, you can go onto online forums or you can look at product reviews to see what issues people have had with that product so you can make sure your version of it is a whole lot better. If you're in a company, you can also access things like failure data or warranty data or weak recall data. Externally, in senior project, not often available, but um, bear in mind that's another way to get uh, need research. So your goal is to do observations and interviews with customers as well as some online searches for data in order to answer the question of who's the customer and what's their need. So what about product research? Again, let's think about the goal here. You want to figure out what has been used in the past as well as what might be able to be used. Maybe some, no one's used that before, but you think it might be useful. So you're looking for existing alternatives so that you can learn from them and build on them so you're not inventing everything from scratch. So you ask the question, what, what other products have been tried? What are the problems with those products? Are there other products that you can think of or that your sponsor or your users can think of that perform some of the functions? Look for patents. Come up with some keywords, do some patent search, because there might not be a, a product yet, but a patent will describe solution types that you can learn from. Obtain some of these existing products and test them. This is called benchmarking. Establish the baseline of where performance currently is. You learn a lot in that process. So ask your sponsor to provide you with some of the alternative products so you can understand what's good and what's not so good about them. So again, how do you do this? You do some interviewing of the sponsor and the user. You do some online searches for products, patents. Some of the stuff can be on Amazon. I mean, it's find products that could potentially solve a portion of your uh, design challenge. And then physical testing. Benchmarking means getting the thing and seeing how it actually works. So the last type of research you're going to want to do is technical research. And here's where you're going to define what those technical issues are so you understand how complicated your job is going to be. You're going to start out again by asking your sponsor. How wide can you go in your solution space? Do you need to use certain types of technology? How much of an existing process do you need to stick with? Your sponsor will have some answers with this, so you need to listen to them on that. You can push back if you think a much better solution is available right outside that, that limit they've placed, but they probably have really good reasons for those limitations. You want to ask if there's been any modeling done. You can learn from that. And then you ask them what the challenge is. 
Um, are there physical principles that you possibly will need to overcome? Do you need to worry about friction? Do you need to worry about heat transfer? What are those physical principles? What about human limitations? Is there going to be an operator here? How much force can they exert in what directions? Um, are there any laws or industry standards that you need to know about? Then take that information and see if you can develop some equations or use some physical models or analytical models to determine what sort of specifications you're going to need. What's required? Loads, power, speed, etc. What, what is required to get your system to function properly? So again, the how here is some interview with your sponsor and technical experts. Do some peer-reviewed literature search. We expect every senior project to have some peer-reviewed literature cited in it. Search through the laws and the industry standards as well. So just wrap, to wrap it up here, your goal right now is to do your design research. Fill up that background section of your statement of work and identify who the customer is, what their need really is, what products have been tried, and what are the technical challenges. When you have all this data, it's gonna be straightforward to write a good statement of work and define for your sponsor what you're going to do in this project. Good luck.